Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, robotics, mechatronics, etc. In this video tutorial we will learn how to compute the step response of a transfer function by using the partial fraction expansion and the cover-up method. I already anticipate that some of you might ask me the following question. Why do we need to learn to compute the step response of a transfer function by hand when we have advanced tools such as MATLAB, Python, Mathematica, etc.? Well, the answer is very simple. You need to learn how to do things by hand because in that way you will build intuition about dynamical systems and control engineering. But before I start, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create these free video tutorials. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. The output of the system when the step signal is applied to the transfer function is given by this formula. W of S times 1 over s. In time domain, the step response is represented by the Heaviside function h of t. Graphically, this function has the following form. If this is time and this is h of t, the function looks like this. It's zero for t smaller than zero, then we immediately have a jump to one, and after that it stays one. If we compute the Laplace transform of h of t, we will obtain the function one over s in the complex domain and consequently 1 over s is given over here. After multiplying w of s with 1 over s, we obtain the output. y of s is equal to... In the numerator we have s plus 3 multiplying s plus 4 divided by s multiplying s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we will use the partial fraction expansion and the cover-up methods to compute the step response of this transfer function. To do that, we need to identify the poles of this expression. So the poles are p1 is equal to 0, p2 is equal to minus 1 and P3 is equal to minus 2. The poles are the zeros of the polynomial in the denominator of this expression and obviously the zeros are 0, minus 1 and minus 2. Once we have identified the poles we need to represent our y of s in the following form c1 over s plus c2 over s plus 1 plus c3 over s plus 2 here c1 c2 and c3 are constants that we need to determine we determine the constant C1, C2, and C3 by using the following formula. Ci is equal to S minus Pi, where Pi is the pole, multiplying the expression Y of S, and by evaluating this expression at the particular pole Pi. Here, I goes from 1 
2 to 3. Again, the constant ci is determined. We take the expression y of s, we multiply that expression by s minus pi, where the pi term is actually the pole corresponding to the specific coefficient. We multiply this expression by y of s, and we evaluate this expression at pi. First, we need to compute C1. We compute C1 as follows. C1 is equal to S minus PI term becomes only S since P1 is equal to 0. Consequently, we have S multiplying Y of S and we evaluate this expression at the pole. And the pole is equal to S is equal to 0. As the result of this expression, we obtain the following. S plus 3 multiplying S plus 4 divided by S plus 1 multiplying S plus 2. And we evaluate this expression at S is equal to 0. After substituting S in this expression, we obtain that the complete expression and consequently C1 is equal to 6. You can verify this by yourself. Let's compute C2. Next, let's compute C2. C2 is equal to the following expression. Let's look at this formula. P2 is minus 1. Consequently, this term will be S minus minus 1 becomes plus 1 multiplying y of s. We need to evaluate this expression at s is equal to the pole, and the pole is minus 1. As the result, we obtain this expression, s plus 3, multiplying s plus 4, and let's see what do we have in the denominator. We obviously have s, and we have s plus 2. Again, this need to be evaluated at s is equal to minus 1. And as the result, we obtain minus 6. You can verify this by yourself. Let's compute C3. C3 is equal to, again, apply the formula, s minus P3 becomes s plus 2 multiplying y of s evaluated at s is equal to minus 2, and this becomes s plus 3 multiplying s plus 4 divided by the following expression, s, and let's see what do we have in the denominator. We obviously have s plus 1. This needs to be evaluated at s is equal to minus 2, and the result is 1. You can verify this by yourself. Consequently, the expression for y of s becomes y of s is equal to c1 is 6. So I will write this term 6 multiplying 1 over s. c2 is minus 6 and consequently we have minus 6 multiplying 1 over s plus 1. C3 is equal to 1, and I will have over here plus 1 multiplying 1 over S plus 2. And we are almost done. We expanded our Y of S as a sum of rational functions. The purpose for doing this expansion is that we know how to compute the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over S, 1 over s plus 1 and 1 over s plus 2. To remind you, the formula for the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s is the following one. So over here, I'm computing the inverse Laplace transform denoted like this, l minus 1, and I have 1 over s. As the result, I obtain the Heaviside function. And the Heaviside function is, roughly speaking, just 1. However, I will denote it like this. Inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus a 
where a is a constant, is exponential function to the power of minus at. Here I have to correct myself. I've wrongly said to the power. That's not correct. It's simply e minus at, multiplying the Heaviside function. You can also omit the Heaviside function because we know that the time in control systems starts from the time instant t0. So you can simply write exponential function of minus at. By using these two formulas, we obtain the following. The step response in the time domain of our transfer function is y of t, where t is time, is equal to 6 times Heaviside function minus 6 times exponential function of minus t. Note over here that in this formula a is equal to 1. And if you compute the inverse Laplace transform of this term, we obtain plus 1 multiplying e to the power minus 2 t. If I want to be more mathematically correct and precise, I need to write this response as 6 times h of t minus 6 times e to the, to the power minus t h of t and plus 1 times e to the minus 2t multiplying h of t. Because this h of t will make sure that we don't take the part of the exponential function for t is smaller than 0. And this is our final response. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.